it does have a classical normal traditional hovering cursor and a hardware side button oh my god i have two tablets connected wirelessly to my laptop Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and let's talk about turning your mobile tablet with a pen into a Cintiq drawing tablet for your computer. Now, I'll touch both on the options for iPad and Android tablets, but mostly today I'm excited about this new app I just recently discovered. It's called Super Display, and it's an app that connects your Android drawing tablet with your Windows computer. And I'm really excited about this particular app, because because first of all, Android pens support hovering cursor. So right now I'm not left clicking and I see exactly where my mouse is, which is really important for many functionalities, including like just seeing where your brush is and what size you're actually working with before you're making a brush stroke. But also, for instance, in Blender, many of its interface details, like for instance, switching between modes, requires hovering the cursor without actually left clicking, as well as changing the brush size. I'm clicking F and I'm changing the brush size with my hovering cursor. And then I left click and I select it. So if I would be using my older iPad Pro, I wouldn't be able to do it. Now, the latest iPad Pro of 2022 that came out last fall, those have the hovering cursor finally introduced, but I assume not a lot of people have those particular iPad Pros, as well as I really don't know a single app that would send a hovering cursor from those new iPads to a Windows computer. Maybe if you're using a Mac, it will work with that sidecar software because it's like all Apple, but I have no way of trying that today i'm talking about using it with a windows computer and yeah there's pretty much as far as i know with an ipad at the moment no option to have a hovering cursor and also this is the only app and the only setup i have with like a mobile tablet working as a cintiq where i have a side button that is a hardware side button and it actually works as right click in Windows, so I can really use it properly, and it has full touch support with all 10 fingers. So that's quite a big deal. And yeah, it supports Windows gestures to switch between like virtual desktops and everything. And yeah, right here, right clicking is pretty important to me because I like switching between different brushes like that and all that. So yeah, real quick to go through this app, um, this is what you have, what you install on your Windows computer. You, you can find it on the Super Display official website. You can probably find the link in the video description. Uh, this is not sponsored or anything, I, I just, I'm really happy this app exists because I like taking advantage of all the hardware I have with me far away from home and this is uh, really fun. So yeah, this is a little window right here, checking updates, setting up a Wi-Fi connection, or a USB connection, which is very useful if you're actually not home with your Wi-Fi router, then it's best to connect with your USB because first of all, it's safer. And secondly, I don't know where you will be able to find just a free Wi-Fi network that will be fast enough to stream a video signal well. So that's probably not going to be an option. And a USB cable will always work really well while also charging your tablet, which is a great thing. And yeah, you can also turn on or off uh, using WinTap driver. If you turn it off, you're using Windows Ink, which I generally recommend on Windows 11, but maybe some apps still take advantage of WinTap more. So there's an option which is great. So everything that's actually important is right here. Advanced options is for some Android drivers and stuff like that. So everything's working really well. And what's really cool, after you have the connection established, which is like almost immediate, then you can just close this window and it's gone. It's not in a tray or anywhere because it's just the driver that's working in the background and you just have your screen connected right here, totally working with all the functionality and everything. So that's pretty cool. Again, pressure, tilt, right click with a side button, everything works. This is like one app that's taking full advantage of all the features of my pretty old Galaxy Tab S3. Literally, like all the other apps I tried, some of them take advantage of tilt, some of them only allow pressure input, some of them support touch, but none of them support 
the side button. I thought it's like dead. I can't use it at all. But here we are with the super display app. I actually have a full advantage of all of the features of this drawing tablet, which is really cool. Now to go through the like mobile side of the app. So this is the app you actually buy on the Play Store. I believe it's like an in-app purchase. It's around 10 euros, $10, something like that. So not exactly cheap, but at least it's a one-time purchase. And yeah, there's this only piece of interface right here, this little floating button. And yeah, it actually has several features. So first of all, right now it shows that I can do the touch input. I can switch to lock then I don't do anything with my fingers, which is pretty useful in many ways. Like if you're working in a 3D app, you probably don't want to accidentally press something with your fingers. And another mode is this crop mode. So you can crop in to any part of your screen and, you know, take advantage of much higher precision. Like if I would switch to Photoshop right here, I can be very precise with this level of zoom. And what's also really cool, this little button, I can press and hold on it and it shows four more buttons. So alpha, beta and gamma buttons, they literally let you switch between presets of these zooms. So you can memorize each zoom the way you want, like one of them would be like fill the screen or something. And this one will be like really zooming in to see the whole canvas like this. And alpha will be like just perfectly fitting the screen. And yeah, then you switch back to your setup like this. This is so cool, like really nicely made little app with minimum functionality, but really everything you need. And the final button you have is literally just undo. And most of the time I'll probably just gonna be using it like this. Also, what I discovered later, the Android side of the app has a bunch of settings in it if you just go back from the streaming and you can remove or add a bunch of buttons, change their icons, set up a whole lot of different actions as well as change the encoding settings and the resolution. So yeah, a lot of stuff to it actually. Everything is working very nice and snappy. Uh, right now you can see no cables are connected, but you can use a USB cable, which will probably be a little bit quicker latency or something. Really cool app, highly recommended, especially if you have a hard time making your side button work on your S Pen or something. Now, a couple more apps I'll mention right here to go through other options. So we'll start with these two apps for Android. What's special about these two apps apps is that they both enable your Android tablet to work as a screenless tablet, just a drawing tablet for your computer. And they have very different ways of working, like virtual tablet right here, you install an app on your PC and you install an app on your Android tablet from the Play Store. All of the apps I'm mentioning here, they are paid apps, but it's always a one-time payment. And so yeah, this app right here, it pretty much works like this. So I just have a gray tablet and it works just fine. It works really well, reliably, consistently with nice settings for pressure sensitivity and cursor sensitivity if you wanna work in the mouse mode. But aside from that, the side button on my Tab S3 S Pen, it doesn't work at all in here. It doesn't support touch at all and there's no tilt. So if you're a 3D artist, this is probably the best option. Now the next app is this pen bridge and this is literally the only piece of actual software you install just a terminal kind of app and it gives you the instruction of what to do so you literally take a picture of the QR code with your tablet and go to the website which is literally the local address of your computer so it connects to it this way using Wi-Fi and I believe this is the only option it's only a Wi-Fi connection app. And yeah, any tablet you use will be working just through a browser in that tablet, which is kind of cool because you don't have to install anything, but the top bar of the browser will always be taking space on the screen. So that's a downside, but Penbridge supports pressure, tilt, and all the like 10 fingers touch. 
so that's pretty cool about it. But there is one issue with uh, the way it works with bigger displays. In my case, I have a QHD resolution on my laptop and I'm only being able to move the cursor with Penbridge only within the 1920 by 1080 rectangle. So it's just meant to be used with a full HD display and that's it. So if you have a full HD display, it will work really well. I already emailed the developer about this problem. Hopefully they'll fix it soon. But yeah, the app is cool, but you literally have zero settings at all. You can't even like turn off touch if you don't need it. And yeah, no changes of uh, like pressure sensitivity, for instance, or a mouse mode, like stuff like that is not available on Penbridge. And finally, this app right here is called on Windows EL Display Hub, but on the tablet side, it's called Easy Canvas. And this is an app available both for the iOS and Android. And this is my favorite app that I use constantly with my iPad. So I just go ahead and uh, launch Easy Canvas on iPad right here, and this is it, I'm connected already. Of course, I never use my iPad in mirroring mode, so this is just a second display here, which is probably a very exciting thing for most people anyway, because you guys like actually drawing and looking at where you're drawing. I'm not a fan of that, I prefer screenless tablets. That's why I'm just drawing on my Android tablet at the bottom and looking at the main display of my laptop. But yeah, right now I'm connected using a USB mode, of course it has also a Wi-Fi mode, but with USB you get to, you know, have a very reliable connection wherever you are and uh, charge your iPad at the same time or Android. Uh, but what's interesting, with this app with Easy Canvas, you don't get a hovering cursor, whether it's an old Apple Pencil, and I assume as well as like a new Apple Pencil with M2 iPad Pros, I assume it won't work anyway, because when I use Easy Canvas on my Android tablet, it also doesn't have a hovering cursor. So it's just not a feature they have added at all yet. And I don't know if they ever will. So that's a thing. If you have a new iPad Pro and a Windows computer, I really don't know if there is a way to connect it as a Cintiq tablet and have a hovering cursor working. So that's a bummer in that regard. And what's interesting, like generally iPad in 3D, not very useful at all. Even though it has pressure, tilt and touch, none of that is really useful if you don't have a hovering cursor and at least a right click button. And what's interesting, even if this would be a second generation Apple Pencil, it would only have like this double tap thing. And I don't know, always double tapping to do a right click, even if it's actually available in any software, like in Easy Canvas, I'm not sure. No guarantee if it works the way you actually want it to work. But yeah, always double tapping is, a, I, I feel like it's quite a bummer. Uh, not to mention that you can't really press and hold that way. How do you press and hold a right mouse button? if it's a double tap. I feel like this won't really work. I don't know. But anyway, that's why today I'm so excited about actually using an Android tablet because it does have a classical, normal, traditional hovering cursor and a hardware side button that works just right. Oh my god, I have two tablets connected wirelessly to my laptop and it's like a three display setup apparently. Oh my god. Yeah, it should be like this, this, I guess. So I'm here and then I'm here and then I'm here. Yeah. So I can set this up to be a duplicate between display one and two. Boom. And here we have a nice little setup. Uh, so what's interesting, I'm not even um, overloading my um, Wi-Fi network or anything because iPad is working using a USB connection. What I am overloading right now is my GPU, right? Like I'm not doing anything and it's 29% of GPU used. <laughs> and if I'll do something on this screen, yeah, is getting much more workload on my GPU. So yeah, that's one thing to be concerned about, like if you're using a Wi-Fi or USB connection to your displays, it means your GPU needs to encode like a video and send it to your tablet. So it's like a GPU performance problem. So yeah, highly recommend using like lower resolutions and stuff like that and probably limit yourself to using just one second display. And one thing to do it, like a lot of the times, since I can't really use my iPad a lot for actual skull 
sculpting or serious drawing because there's no hovering cursor. Most of the times I use my iPad here as just a second display. But after a while you realize like what do I really use my second display for? Like music, YouTube, maybe some kind of... Well, I'm looking up references, right? But all of that you can just use actual iOS on iPad for. So instead what I would do is I would just use iPad as the iPad and have the screen mirroring with my Android tablet right here. And I would recommend as a bonus a little extra app right here. It works with any mobile device, whether it's an iPad or an Android tablet or a phone. Bluetooth audio receiver. You can find it on a Microsoft store. It's a free app. Don't look at any paid versions because those are scammy and terrible and have ads in them and everything. This is it. This app is free and this is all it is. What it does is it turns your computer, like your Windows PC, into like a Bluetooth speaker for any of your mobile devices. So right now my iPad is sending its sound to my laptop. So if I would start playing a video or a music it would be playing out of my desktop speakers right here or in my headphones that are connected to my laptop so I am wearing my headphones and I'm hearing my Windows system as well as my iPad it's a pretty cool setup that way and I can play like a video tutorial in here or you know watch a movie or play music and none of that will be you know taking a toll on my GPU that needs to work on some 3d stuff which is definitely the smartest way to use your iPad I think. Really cool setup in that regard so these are my thoughts so far. Of course sometimes I am using my iPad as a secondary display, sometimes it's useful to have like a second window of your app so in those cases it's good to have a second display actually showing up for the Windows system. But yeah this is it, this is my setup, this is like the setup I'm actually sticking to so far, I'm actually gonna be paying these 10 euros for this super display or whatever the name of this app is because this is like the best app I've seen so far and it makes my Android tablet working really well. So I'll pretty much gonna be toning down the brightness here and using it a bit toned down like that and my iPad will be streaming music or videos for me while I'll be actually working on my main display right here. So that's the setup. Tell me guys what you think, maybe you know more about how to set up things. But yeah, for me this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Oh man, I'm so excited about this. Funny thing is, I gave away this Tab S3 to Nadia back when I purchased iPad Pro. I feel like I'm gonna have to take it back. <laughs> Or maybe invest into a really big and kind of cheap Android tablet with a pen. That's probably an option, right?